We wrap up Tokyo Game Show 2019 with an in-depth look at Final Fantasy VII Remake and the new Tales of Arise trailer on this episode of the JRPG Report. Hello fans, welcome back to your weekly JRPG podcast. This is the JRPG Report, and this is actually episode 78. Uh, got through the entire podcast last time, calling it incorrectly 78, it was 77, so uh, yeah, that's just, I'm kind of surprised it hasn't happened this many episodes in, getting the wrong number, but it did, so yes. This is 78. My name is James Fisher. Thank you so much for tuning back in again this week. We have got, guys, just a jam-packed, awesome podcast for you today. Um, We kind of thought that there might be a few things come out later on from Tokyo Game Show, and indeed, they did. So let's kind of dive right into that. Um, I'm going to be breaking down the uh, gameplays a uh, trailer that went out from the demo of the floor TGS for Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm going to give you a real in-depth look into it. I've watched it a couple times over and really feel like I've got uh, not only the basics of things, but some new details and some things we might have missed at first glance. So if there's any reason why you are... Uh, not wanting to hear any of this, you want to find out for yourself, you just want to wait, you're probably going to want to skip ahead a little bit. Uh, I'll be talking about Tales of Arise and uh, a few things about that later on. But that's why you're here, is to talk about JRPGs, and there is none bigger than FF7 Remake, and it's looming March 3rd, 2020 release of at least Episode 1. So we talked last week about the new trailer that came out and all the goodies that were uh, buried in there, but um, there was a good fifteen, no, twenty plus minute video that came out from the show floor, really detailing um, a whole lot of things. Uh, let's just get right into it. First and foremost, what I want to talk about and what has me. It had me super, super excited, and it still has me excited. <laughs> uh, it's not exactly what I thought it was. Um, there's a classic mode for this game. Now, no, it doesn't change the game into some sort of uh, everybody stands around in turn-based combat old-school game. However, it does um, make things easier. So they showed three different modes. There is now classic, easy, and normal. What we've probably been watching it on has been normal. So that means every time you attack, it attacks, it plays more like a hack and slash than a turn-based combat game. You still will trigger all your abilities and items, uh, those type of uh, limit breaks. That's all done. Um, In normal mode, you're doing everything. Easy mode looks to um, just, I think, just make things a little more easy in terms of a difficulty spike. But now classic mode turns it into um, automatic attacks. So things in Blade Chronicles 2. That was my first uh, impression, where the characters are auto-attacking. Now, they're kind of taking this to the next level with classic mode, and they're making this accessible to maybe gamers like myself who played the original, who aren't as adept at action games would like something a little easier. Maybe there's players that, you know, I mean, let's face it, guys, arthritis and, you know, hand problems do limit a lot of gamers and their gameplay, and this would make it a lot easier. So auto attacks, but also auto blocking and auto dodge. So in the demo, Cloud was, uh, (laughs) he was pretty much invincible. Now, I don't know if that's going to be changed. Obviously, there's a long time to, Make that he's going to get hit. It's not like he's completely impervious to damage, but it does take those elements away. But you still trigger all your abilities and limit breaks. You would do the items, magic, those type of things. The only thing the computer's handling all the every second decisions, and it does take it more akin to the original 
FF7 experience of once your time bar was filled and it was your turn to act, you would act. It does because it the video is phenomenal. You you'll want to check it out. It even shows um the controller in the player's hand and his fingers are off the buttons in classic mode. When there's time to select an ability or magic or something, then he selects it. So I really thought that was cool to really see how it's going to play. Very impressed. I think, I think personally, I would probably try it on normal. See how that goes. Kick it down to easy and then classic. But it just seems to be more engageable mode. More akin to the original if that can be even possible in this game i mean it's 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 different it's a different game it's a remake of a classic so i'm super super excited about that that's um this is the recap of information from square enix i'll read that off to you um now we got a glimpse at both easy and normal modes from the in-game option menus and producer kasai then showed us a new combat mode named classic mode In the original FF7, you would wait around until the ATB gauge fills up and then select a move to initiate your attack. With classic mode and FF7 remake, the team had recreated that same style of play. In standard modes, the ATB gauge fills up repeatedly while attacking the enemy, but in classic mode, this aspect of gameplay is handled automatically. The player does not need to do anything and the character fights automatically charging up their ATB gauge. So anyone playing Final Fantasy VII Remake in classic mode does not have to worry about the action side of combat system and can instead focus on selecting commands, making it possible to play FF7 Remake as if it were a classic menu-based RPG. After sharing off combat in the game, Kasaki-san introduced one of the elements we first saw in TGS a few days ago, the Squats minigame. Uh, that was really, <laughs> that was very interesting. And they also got a look at... Uh, the next boss, the apps down in the sewers of Bigar, you get to see Cloud, Tifa, and Aerith take on that boss, and it's it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty intense. The only thing I didn't like, if you watch this breakdown of the trailer, um, in the original, when he's going to hit you with the tsunami attack, there's really not a whole lot you can do except brace for impact. It did appear that this was more of like water shooting out of the sewer and if you as long as you weren't on like that section of the screen you and i get hit by the attack that's just my initial uh for what i saw of that fight uh era standard attacks are long ranged and pressing the triangle button uses her unique ability tempest her holy circle ability creates an area in the battlefield and any spell used within that area is cast repeatedly during this boss battle clad had the ifrit summer materia equipped because of this cloud's attacks caused his summon gauge to eventually fill up completely over that time with the field summon he summoned ifrit who remain who remains on the battlefield so think more like it's not quite like uh 12 where when you summoned you know they came out there with the character who summoned them and the other two members disappeared it truly looks like he f- is out there fighting alongside your party. Really cool touch. I liked it. Um, Summons are typically controlled by the AI, but we saw Cloud spin his ATB charges to make Ifrit use his unique abilities, such as Flare Burst and Crimson Die. (laughs) Crimson Dive, not Die. Ifrit remained on the battlefield, fighting until Cloud's summon gauge depleted, at which point he unleashed his ultimate attack, Hellfire. So yeah, once the gauge goes all the way down, uh, you don't have to trigger anything. It's just an automatic. He'll use his what would have been, you know, in the original game when you summoned him that attack. That is now what happens at the end of the gauge when it's done. Each character coin equipped one sum of material each, and while playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, it'll be up to the player to decide which sum into equipment, depending on the battlefield and enemy. Uh, in that trailer, we also saw Shiva, so. We've at least got confirmation of those two summons. And like like it says, each player can have only one. And uh, it looks like they will play. We were wondering how summons are going to work in this game. Are you going to be able to just spam 
summons and you know you've got one each and you'll probably want to save those for the more challenging fights but they look like they are going to be a true asset instead of an afterthought we saw uh, so some of the details that you might have originally missed i know i kind of did we talked about that new character and uh the different um some of the different back and forth between the characters. It looks like that's kind of how, instead of having a game that you sit there and have to read, there's still going to be cut scenes. And I think those cut scenes will be preserved uh, as they were and just retold. It looks like a lot of what would normally be standing around talking. You're actually going to get some of that during fights. So there's a lot of back and forth in particular in a chair between cloud and Barrett. And it's a, uh, it's pretty humorous and pretty awesome, to say the least. Uh, one of the things, you, if you really pay attention, um, Cloud actually can smash crates. So, I mean, not exactly like Ratchet, but there's definitely going to be items that will be in the crates, and I'm sure Gil as well, at some point. So you will want to uh, smash, <laughs> smash anything you can see. I'm sure there will be other type of those items as we get further along into the game. So that was kind of a nifty little uh, tidbit that I saw. Uh, when you really watch these things, one of the things you are going to take away from the, not only the visual and the gameplay experience from it, the music is amazing. Like they have taken all those original tracks and the best thing I can equate it to was going and seeing the live symphony. Um, it is that quality of music in a game and they've kind of taken multiple tracks and kind of melted them into an experience. So as you're, you know, you've got your standard battle themes as you're fighting normal enemies, the boss, themes are ratcheted up to the next level they intensify as the fight goes on they get a little quicker as the hp bar starts to drop on the boss it sounds so good like this sounds like one of those games that is going to be as much as a feast for the eyes as it is for the ears and i'm so excited for it um one thing and you really got to pay attention to this i did not see it <clears throat> in every fight in trailer cloud has his buster sword except one maybe two second clip and i think it's right when um after there it's that second fight against i guess the second boss quote unquote the little flying uh security thing right after they see uh president shinron they're setting off the bomb blah 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 um it cloud has a different weapon and it kind of looks like the Rune Blade. So it certainly appears, and I don't think it would be just Cloud. I think all of them are going to have different weapons that are showed off in hand. And that is so awesome. Is there anything that takes you kind of out of a gameplay experience as when you buy a new weapon and it doesn't change? <laughs> or, yeah, you just bought a new weapon and you spent all this money for it and it... It's the same thing over and over again. Like, I love the the uh, Trails of series, but, I mean, how many different times can you buy, like, the same sword, right? It's basically the same thing over and over again. Just more powerful and cost you more money. So I love that that detail is going to be in there. Really makes me excited. Um, I saw a video the other day, and I couldn't really disagree with it, that what's the most disappointing JRPG and in that countdown Final Fantasy 15 was it it's hard to disagree with that Square Enix for all their missteps over the years and they've made more than a few of them they're trying to get Final Fantasy right again and they knew this was the project to make it happen so our is it going to work? Only time will tell. But from everything I've seen, it's a yes. Now, if they stretch this thing out 
and they add some things in there that just don't make any sense. They can certainly off put some people, but man, they're doing it right right now. And the fever pitch is extreme. (laughs) I cannot wait for this game to come out. And I hope you guys are half as excited as I am. Like if you guys have listened to the past podcasts, I was very skeptical. I was not all in on this. And now all my chips are pushed in. I cannot wait for six months from now. It is going to be so much fun. And I, I'm really excited about this classic mode that I feel like I don't have to sacrifice anything and still get the whole experience. So what are you guys' thoughts? Head over to the Facebook page and let me know how excited you are. I shared a image of the new menu screen give your thoughts on that if you like it or not and just your your thoughts in general if you disagree i'd love to hear why and i we can respect that opinion and go on from there but that's all for uh final fantasy 7 remake uh hopefully i I dare say it's going to go a little dark for a while we won't get too much more information on it um this was this was the big reveal the big show they own tgs and uh, now it's time to just get this puppy uh knocked out we'll take a quick break here have a word from our sponsor and be back with more of the jrpg report this year's tokyo game show uh, apparently drew over two hundred and fifty thousand fans to uh to this gaming convention and they weren't all there to see a final fantasy remake i'm sure more than a few were uh, very excited but there were other games and one of the other big ones that we knew we were going to see a little bit more of, and I was very excited to see this as well, Tales of Arise made its presence. There was a new one-minute trailer and some new uh, screenshots as well, kind of just uh, solidifying a few things that we knew and fleshing out a few that we didn't. We, of course, saw Alfin and uh, Shion as well, but there was a new mysterious character that was teased at the very end. Of course, we know there's going to be a party system. They've already um, said that. How big is the party going to be? Hopefully it's more than uh, Zestaria. But this new character, all we could do was see the very back of him or her. I would, I would guess it's a girl. Looks like maybe a mage's cap in the back. And a cute little flying... Um, you know, Some have speculated that this is the new mascot. Uh, for this one, kind of like a little bird type creature, didn't get to see a whole lot of it, but we we purely see this character stumbling through what appears to be a, a dry desert type of rocky area, and her eyes kind of get you know lowered, and she passes out, and you see Alpha and Shion kind of running towards him or her. That's all we know. It is speculated that this is going to be a new party member. We don't know anything more than that. So a few tidbits of information that we uh, heard that there was a uh, reveal that there's what's called astral energy that resides in all life and uh, things. Think of it, you know, like your live stream type of mana or whatever it is. Uh, they say Rians can use this as can use astral arts, which are a magic that utilizes astral energy. The user's eyes shine when using astral arts. That fire sword that uh, Alfin wields that he ripped out of uh, <laughs> Shion in that one in the first trailer uh, is a power manifested by astral energy. Since the sword burns the wielder, it can only be used by Alfin, who does not feel pain. Uh, in the trailer, it says like uh, something to the effect of. Um, only he who does not feel pain can wield the sword healed continuously by, um, the person who can only, uh, deliver pain so that, and you see the one image in particular, uh, a big knight looking thing kind of grabs Shion from the back shoulder and like is instantly like shocked because, uh, he shouldn't be landing hands on her period, but uh, that was a bad move as uh yeah, her anyone who con comes into contact with her is uh instantly brought lots of pain. They they and uh so we saw in particular one 
combat um, snippet for about five seconds of Alpha just going to town on a, kind of one of those buffalo-looking type creatures from Tales. It looked like a familiar enemy, and I, I should have done my research and, and figured out what enemy that was. I can't really um, can't remember the name of it, but he, his moves are impressive. It's very, very fast and fluid. You can't not have that impression from the gameplay. But it's just him. Like, you can't even see Shion at the time, but he is wielding the fire sword. So that's a little bit weird. Maybe she was just off camera at that moment. Um, I don't, you know, I don't have the two pictures side by side, but it feels like to me like they've touched up the character models a little bit and and not necessarily in more of a um, graphical high graphical sense they actually and I, I use this in quotation marks they look more tails like okay um, there there's always been that tails of character look and I didn't get that impression at first but it certainly appears like they have gotten that filter <laughs> put on them for lack of a better word. And I really like that. Um, we knew there's going to be tons of changes. We've documented that well, and we'll have a bunch more information coming out as well. But I am very excited about the new developments in Tales of Arise. Didn't get a release date. We still only have that 2020 window, but I think it's going to be a while. I think we're, if we're talking about earlier, later in 2020, I think this is trending towards later um, as maybe one of the last uh, PS4 games to be released. But it's exciting, and they've got plenty of time to work on it. There's really no no rush. There's a lot of great GRPGs to keep us um, held over until then. So that's the two giant, huge uh, AAA games coming out that uh, we were really hoping to see more and more of and we got it so a bunch more things to talk about a lot of quick hits let's just kind of get into it um, starting on September the 20th the uh, code vein demo will get some new um, some new updates we they remember we talked about that they were going to do that high difficulty kind of sacrifice stage multiplayer mode and the ability to bring their customized character into the full game. And they weren't sure when that update was going to happen. Well, that is going to happen on September 20th. I downloaded it uh, last night, but have not had a chance to play it yet. Um, there was actually a couple demos. So another demo that kind of just dropped out of the blue. I was, wasn't anticipating this, but there is a demo for Trails of Cold Steel 3. Uh, that is available uh, right now. Uh, you can go pick that up. It's live in in um, all the European countries, Australia, New Zealand, uh, U.S. and Canada as well. Um, here is a overview of the demo. And of course, there was a trailer to go along with that. Range Swarzer uncovers a dark plot that threatens his homeland. To face their enemies, he must prepare a new generation of heroes as an instructor at the new branch campus and guide them towards victory. Note, no trophies will be acquired in this demo version. In order to ensure you're able to acquire the trophy for completing the prologue in the full game, please follow these steps. Um, kind of weird, but here you go. Number one, create a save in the demo right before its end boss. I'm not sure how you're supposed to know which one that is, but your guess is as good as mine. Number two, you will transfer that save to the full game. And then number three, defeat the boss in the full game to acquire the trophy. So you'll be able to beat it in the uh, demo version, but you're going to want to do that again, first and foremost, once the game comes out. Treads of Cold Steel 3 is available October 22nd in North America and Europe, so just a little bit more than a month away from this fantastic game. I'm on the fence about... Uh, I mean, I downloaded the demo, so I guess I'm going to play it. And I guess, obviously, um, if you can port over your saved progress, that would that'd give me an extra hour or two off the game. I mean, these games are 100-hour games, so to, to save myself an hour or two seems like a pretty smart thing, <laughs> pretty smart thing to do. But, yeah, so we got the 
I got the Code Vade demo downloaded, and I've got Trails of Cold Steel 3 demo downloaded and uh, ready to go. There was also a demo, and I didn't realize that this was on there. Maybe, shoot, maybe I reported about this before and I don't remember. Mistover has a demo that was on the PS in store. So I uh, downloaded it as well and uh, plan to check those out. I may get to those in the next week and we'll let you guys know about it on the next podcast. Uh, we got some updates for uh, Trails of Crestoria. Now that is the smartphone game tie-in to uh, the Tales of series. It doesn't look too bad. Um, there was two new trailers that showcased various scenes and cut-ins of the battle. It is coming out worldwide for iOS and Android sometime this year, so they've only got a couple more months. So if you're um, interested in checking uh, checking that out, I've got those videos posted over on the Facebook page, so you can check out the related articles um, and uh, see see how it looks. Um, I'm, I mean, if it's a free mobile game, I got no problem with. Uh, but checking out the combat, just from uh, just from the looks of it, looks to almost be turn based. Um, it's kind of yeah. the uh, The characters are totally lined up um, in a line there, and there's four players uh, in this demo, and they are all lined up. There's Luke from Tales of Abyss. That's pretty cool. So yeah, I will. Um, I'll be checking this one out. I'll, I'm a fan of that style of gameplay. But like I said, you can check out not only this story but all the stories that we talk about by heading over to the JRPG Report Facebook page. Give us a like, and um, anything that I talk about today, you will be able to find over there. We got some new details about a uh, fairy tale. Um, there was plenty of information scattered all over the place about that so if you're interested in learning a ton more more than i can really tell you about here because there's a ton of images and um ton of images and videos to kind of go over they talk about uh building up a guild which is you know pretty standard for for those uh for those they've got a dream gathering of popular mages so there, there are more than 10 unique playable characters Five of those have been announced so far. That's Wendy, Lucy, Natsu, Gray, and Erza. Um, that you can experience this exciting story. So there's a whole lot of information. Um, there's called the Mode Changer, which is, can be activated during battle. Support characters can also lend a hand with powerful magic attacks. So lots of lots to. Uh, Lots to check out there. They do say that like the ATLA series, this game uses a symbol and counter system for battles. When you run into the enemy on the field, you enter a turn-based combat in to input the battle scene. Like the player's party, enemies also have a certain formation, and you'll have to think about the attributes and effect range of your magic. It is described as a highly strategic battle system. Uh, new... Information about Yokai Watch, uh, both part one for the Nintendo Switch. There were some new screenshots uh, for it. Level five came out with that. Of course, this game is coming out October 10th in Japan. No news on a Western release just yet. So if you want to check that out, you can do that. Then we had a major update to the map and boss Yokai for Yokai Watch 4. So it kind of looks like um, both of these are going to be coming out very soon. Still no word on. Um, Western release, but this just got that was a huge update for Yokai Watch 4. So I have a feeling that those are in the uh, in the works for a Western release. We'll just have to wait and see. If you're a fan of the Sword Art Online series, there was a ton of uh, new trailers and character details uh, for it. There was also a, uh, I think there's a new mobile game, so you'll want to. Um, Distinguish between the two, and this one was the uh, uh, Elicization Lickers. Lycoris? <laughs> um, that, that's a subtitle for this Sword Art Online. That's the one that's coming to PC, PS4, and Xbox One. So a slew of new 
uh, information and uh, screenshots for that. I was, I've been impressed with what I've seen for this one. It definitely, uh, it definitely looks better than on, I thought it would. If that, uh, if that makes sense, and it immediately reminded me with the four players running along the screen there as uh, kind of look like Grand Blue Fantasy is trying to do. Um, but maybe they're already doing it, so they find some something that works for them. Speaking of Grand Blue Fantasy, there was a little bit of information about the versus game, but as far as the RPG, it was uh, missing an action from Tokyo Game Show. So we've been a little, <laughs> little worried about the outcome of that one for a while, and its absence from the show doesn't speak volumes in terms of it being ready anytime soon um it kind of i mean they're a smaller studio anyway so maybe they're like let's just let's put everything into getting verses out there i mean it's a fighting game you would think that would not be as difficult to complete as a jrpg for sure so get everybody get that one pumped out and get it done and then get on to uh making this giant JRPG that they've been working on for a while now. There was a new, uh, they released the opening movie for Project Secure Wars. So you can check that out um, if you are so inclined. It was, uh, the opening movie is animated by uh, Santogen, which uh, recently announced the uh, animation based on the game. They were, they are handling that, those duties. It's due out. The game is due out on PlayStation 4 on December 12th in Japan and spring 2020 in North America and Europe. So if you want to check out that, you can uh, you can do that. We got some new uh, gameplay and screenshots for Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. A full 21 minutes of footage. So if you're Looking forward to that one. You can check it out. There's, uh, there's a, a large batch of, of screenshots and, of course, one one very long movie. So that'll it's all in Japanese, so you're not really going to know what they're, uh, what they're saying unless your Japanese is on point. But if you're interested in checking more of that out, you can do that. The game is due out worldwide, PS4, Switch, iOS, and Android on January the 23rd. Never got a chance to play that one. Kind of looking forward to... Uh, Checking it out when it does come out. Pokemon Sword and Shield details a new Pokemon. His name is Sir Fetched. Far Fetched is that's uh, this is his evolved form, and I'm only talking about this because it's uh, ridiculous looking, and his category is a wild duck, and I don't know why, but I just found that to be humorous. Yeah, so. That's all the Pokemon news you're getting. That's done. Over with. <laughs> Story of Seasons. Friends of Mineral Town had a new uh, new batch of screenshots out. Introduced the game's secret marriage candidates. Here's a brief introduction to those players. The Harvest Goddess. She lives in the springs on Mother's Hill. She is a very sociable and friendly personality and watches over the protagonists. Uh, you had this guy, his name is Juan. He is a traveling salesman doing business in Mineral Town. He comes to the town selling questionable items. I'm not sure what that guy. And so this whole story is based upon um, the fact that I wanted to talk about this character called Kappa. He lives in the lake on Mother's Hill, and he appears when you throw a cucumber into the lake. Um,. This character looks like to be a duck person, like artist, that lives in the water and apparently likes cucumbers. And there is uh, the gourmet, a gourmet critic said to have the strongest tongue. He only comes to Mineral Town on the day of the cooking festival. So these are the new people you can check out story of seasons friends of mineral town is due out for switch on october 17th in japan and at a quote later date in north america 
and Europe, and maybe these people are secret for a reason. That's that's some weird characters. Not sure you want to get into that or not. Um, still no use news on a um, Western release or not, but Dragon Quest Walk, which came out September the twelfth in Japan. This, this is all you need to know about how popular Dragon Quest is, right? One week, this cell phone game got 5 million downloads. That's a lot of downloads. <laughs> and in my mind, that says, well, how much would it cost to bring it over here? Maybe we'll get it. I just think it's an interesting title. Anything to get people out and about is not a bad thing, especially if they are playing some video games while they do it. Uh, if you're looking forward to Fairy Fencer F Advent Dark Force for the Switch um, and don't want to get it digital, well, Limited Run Production is uh, doing a physical run of it. Limited Run Games will produce a Limited Run Physical Edition of the game via their online store. It will begin a 30-day open pre-order period starting now and lasting for another 30 days or so. Uh, now, the game is available both physically and physically and digitally for PS4. However, it's only digital for Switch and PC. So if you want a physical copy on the Switch, make sure you head over to Limited Run Games. They are awesome, man. Always uh, on the lookout for us gamers and our need for physical copies, which, you know, we're going digital. There's no way around that. And I really think companies like them, and uh, there's some others too, but we may see more and more of those pop up that, yeah, like maybe, I, I still think it's a world where there can be physical copies, but then, like, I play a game like Red Dead Redemption 2, and the game is so huge. And already requires such a huge, <laughs> like, patch download. Those are the games I'm kind of like, man, why not just have it all digital? But I'm a purist, and I'm surrounded by my game collection, and it brings me great joy. So I don't want to uh, see them completely go away either. Anyway, on to the next story. Um, coming out tomorrow... Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch Remastered will be releasing. There is a new launch trailer for it as it comes out um, for PS4, PC, and Switch. Of course, the first time being on the Switch, and this will be the re release of the PS3 game. Um, it's just hitting at, a, at an odd time for me. Um, I played that game. To death, it was like I said. It's one of the few games I actually platinumed, so I'm not wanting to just jump right back into it immediately. I kind of feel like it's a game I can get on sale down the road, and it'd be uh, be a little bit better. But we shall uh, we shall see. Uh, Romancing Saga Three Remaster got screenshots, characters, comparisons on the battle system and mini games, and the new dungeon due out worldwide on November 11th. So here's kind of what some of the new stuff that we saw. Uh, the characters of Sarah, Ellen, Monica, uh, Katharina, Julian, Thomas, Michael, and uh, Khalid. And now it has the original versus remaster scene comparisons, including the opening, Holy King Temple, and the Brunei system. It's got screenshots of the battle system. Many games like Mass Combat and Trade. The new dungeon, Labyrinth of Darkness, plus three new monsters that appear in the new dungeon. By taking a certain character into the new dungeon, you can witness original episodes about the past of Julian and Khalid that were not told in the original game. You will also get to see the past of another important character, the dungeon set up in a new additional episode that was created for this game. New elements include New Game Plus and improved operability. There is also an autosave feature, plus... More save data slots than the original version. Cross-save is supported between PS4 and Vita and between Xbox One and Windows 10. The Xbox One and Windows versions are also cross-buy. 
As it is, the game is due out for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, Vita, PC, via Steam, Windows 10, iOS, and Android, and anything else you can possibly think of. That's I should just say available for everything, as that's pretty much everything but uh, 3DS, isn't it? <laughs> so, cool thing that they are doing, doing there. Speaking of remastered, we are getting the Atelier Dusk Trilogy Deluxe Pack. This was announced for PS4 Switch and PC. Um, pre-orders begin on September 26th in Japan. So the Dusk Trilogy had uh, Aisha, uh, Esha, and Laji, and uh, the Shall. I always want to say Shallies, as that uh, the two. It's just called Shally, but there was the two girls named Shally in that one. Uh, there is. Um, Release date was not announced, but a worldwide release has been confirmed. So if you kind of missed missed on that trilogy and want to pick it back up in uh, a remastered version, you can do that. You can do that with the original Arlen trilogy as well. I just I found that to be a bit pricey. Um, having played all those games already, we saw them. <laughs> uh, it it just needs to be a little bit cheaper. That's that's pretty much all I want to say. Uh, there was 14 minutes of new footage for Trials of Mana. Uh, Square Enix showed off uh, its remake of... Um, Trials of Mana looks incredible. Um, I'm really looking forward to this game when it does come out worldwide for uh, PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC on April the 24th. So plenty of new footage you can uh, check out about this one if you were a little on the fence about it you want to see it in action you can do so there I was extremely uh, happy about this new story and that we talked about it coming to Japan and I said please 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 come to the west and it is Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3 for the Switch are coming west on September the 27th so again not <laughs> not perfect timing but it never can be and i thought these were pretty pretty well uh price for it so they released the switch versions of dragon quest one dragon quest two luminaries of the legendary line and dragon quest three the seeds of salvation via the e-shop in the west day and date with a japanese release and so this is only digital i've not seen anything about a physical uh, collection as far as um, a western release now they are available physically uh, on the switch in Asia in English Chinese and Korean subtitles in October you can get that via the play Asia website you can find the link to that in the story itself that I shared on the Facebook page so here's the price points for the original Dragon Quest it's four ninety nine. Dragon Quest 2 is 649 Dragon Quest 3 at 1249. I think that's pretty fair as each three got to be a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, and then much bigger in terms of scope of the games. I guess all this time I didn't realize that was like a trilogy, but that's pretty cool. Well, uh, I finally get a chance to play Dragon Quest 2 and 3. Very excited. About that, I'm not sure exactly how these games look. I've not seen any uh, gameplay on it, but hopefully they look pretty. I mean, you're talking about very old, <laughs> very old games, so we'll have to wait and see how how pretty they have uh, managed to make them be. So good news indeed. Uh, last thing we want to talk about, and I, <laughs> I didn't bring this up last podcast. And it wasn't until like, you know, sometimes you, when you are doing something and you forget, and then like two minutes after you're done, like if you're talking on the phone with somebody, if you need to tell them something, you forget and you hang up the phone. This was like two minutes after I stopped recording last week. We did not have any news about Atelier Riza. It, we've had something every week for months. We didn't have anything last week. Well, they took one week off as uh, 
we definitely had some stuff <laughs> this week. There was a new story trailer and sit this gameplay about the upcoming Raza game coming out. Uh, it'll be out in just a week in Japan. We'll have to wait for it in the West until October the 29th. So you can check out the new uh, story trailer and gameplay trailer. Now, I've got two stories linked on the Facebook page. The first is the original one that came out on September 14th. And that story trailer is in Japanese. Now, the latest trailer that I've got, um, I just uh, put that over there today. as uh, It just broke this morning, so I'm glad I, I got it. That actually is in English. So if you want to check that out, you can. And we got some details about what is being called the secret hideout. Now, this is how you can create and customize your own secret base of operations. Pretty cool. I didn't, I guess I didn't realize that that was, uh, that was in there. So here's the details via Koi Tecmo. As Raza, the budding alchemist, and her mischievous group of friends set out in search of adventure, they'll be faced with a wealth of challenges to overcome. A series of circumstances leads the group into the depths of the mysterious sunken mine, a deep and dark, dried up environment that is home to something potentially evil, a gate to another world. To prepare for their herring journey, to save their homeland from whatever is lurking in the far off land, the Avengers create a secret hideout as their new base of operations. As a budding young alchemist, Rise will have to ensure she diligently practices synthesizing between her travels. The higher her alchemy level, the more useful her items will be for future adventures. In addition, players will be able to use the exciting new gathering synthesis system from the hideout to create new lands to explore. They can use forging to create new weaponry perfect for tougher foes and item duplication to easily craft a variety of consumable items for their journey. Since Rise's secret hideout will not be complete without personalization, players will be able to customize their hideout to reflect their own personality through using various items found while exploring the multiple worlds. Rise and her team will be able to increase their stats depending on how the base is remodeled and gathered items can be utilized strategically to grant useful stat bonuses in the field during battle. These Atelier Raza, Ever Darkness, and the Secret Hideout features will unlock as players experience more of the game's gripping narrative, quests, and magical lands. So, the Ever Darkness must be the thing that they find at the bottom of the sunken mine. And now we know where the Secret Hideout is. Dun dun dun. Another week goes by, and another Ryza story. Maybe we'll get by next week without one. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, that is all the news and notes we have from TGS 2019. We'll put a put a wrap on that one. That was quite quite a show. Lots of content as we pretty much got two full podcasts out of it. I kind of anticipate not a whole lot coming out here. We'll be able to talk about a few things more in depth. Um as uh, some of our stories may get a little bit dry here in the next couple of weeks, but whatever we find, we will certainly keep you posted on there. So I mentioned the demos that are available now on the PSN store. Go check those out. Um, while you're there, why don't you give Caravan Stories to download? It isn't going to cost you anything. Now, it is based off a of mobile game, so if you don't care for that type of game, don't download it. Okay, But if you do... You can uh, check me out most nights playing it, or you can check out the live streams on our YouTube page or via the PlayStation. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Like, you know, like I said, it doesn't cost you anything, so there's not that um, <laughs> monetary investment in it. But it's just a kind of a fun, good time killing, interesting game. Um, I'm enjoying it. It's certainly holding me over just fine. So if you want to give that a check out and come play. Um, I'm usually on there about 9.30 or 10 every night and play for an hour or two. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, don't forget, there is the awesome Popular in Japan sale as well going on now on the PlayStation Store. Tons and tons and tons of not only JRPGs, but also other games that come from from that side of the world that are popular and some pretty 
significant discounts on some games. So if you haven't got a chance to pick them up, now would probably be a pretty good time to do it. Now, keep in mind, uh, I love the PSN store, but sometimes, like, if you put the filter on there and just select RPGs, it will take out some RPGs from that list. I don't know if that's a store thing or if that's like the developer not giving a proper um, category for their game. But I was, the main list is super long. So I thought it'd be a good idea to just narrow it down and, and look for, for any good JRPGs that I wanted. And I had another chance to get on there and look through the full list. I was like, man, I don't remember seeing that. I didn't know that was on sale. So it's a long list, but if you want to see everything, you're going to have to just scroll through the whole thing. But definitely check that out. I think that goes on for another week, maybe two. So you've got time. But head over there and check it out. You don't want to miss it. There's some deals to be had. That's it for this week. We'll wrap up the actual episode 78 of the JRPG Report. My name is James Fisher. Thank you so much for tuning in yet again this week. Be sure to check back next week. It may not be quite this long, but we'll have another podcast for you guys. Um, thank you so much for listening and tuning in every week. It's because of you guys that I do this. Uh, don't forget, head over to YouTube. You can check out my live streams as well as the video version of this podcast with all the videos that I uh, hinted at or talked about. You can check those all out in one spot. Until next time, guys, get back out there and level up.